Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about using triggers in SQL and MySQL. Now, a trigger is basically a, a block of SQL code which we can write, which will define a certain action that should happen when a, a certain operation gets performed on the database. So I could write a trigger which would basically tell MySQL to do something when like a entry was added into a particular table in the database or when something was deleted from a database table you know, basically I could say like hey anytime uh, you know a row gets deleted from this table I want you to like insert something into something else so triggers can be extremely powerful and extremely useful so I'm gonna show you guys basically how they work and we'll just talk about like setting them up and everything so the first thing we have to do uh, at least to follow along with this tutorial is we're gonna create a table and you don't have to create this table. I'm just doing this so we can illustrate what's happening, but this is not necessary for triggers. Um, but I'm creating a table called trigger test and it's just gonna have uh, one column, which is just gonna be a message. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create this. So we're creating this table trigger test. And now what we can do is we can start writing out some triggers. Now, when we're using MySQL, um, and up to this point in this course, we've been using this program PopSQL, which is actually an awesome program for you know writing out different uh, SQL commands, and it's been really great because it's you know it's been easy for us to visualize stuff. But when we're gonna write triggers, um, we're gonna have to define the triggers over here in the command line, and that's just because uh, there's one special thing that we have to do, which is change the. Uh, the SQL delimiter that we're gonna use and I'll talk to you guys about that in a second But in order to do that we're gonna have to do it inside of the terminal So if you're on Windows, you can just go down and open up the um, MySQL command line client. So it's this guy right here. That's what I have open It might ask you to log in um, if you're on the OS X and you're using terminal you can just type in um, if you just type in my SQL hyphen u root hyphen P and then hit enter, it should prompt you for your password and then you should be logged in. Um, and so that's how you can get to this screen over here. And then once we're in here, we're gonna wanna use the database. So I'm just gonna say use draft and draft is the name of the database that I created like in the first tutorial. Um, so whatever the database you created was, you can just use that. Um, and then over here, so once we have all that set up, now we're ready to go and start creating these triggers. So I need to um, actually execute the trigger code over here inside of the command line, but we can actually just write it out over here inside pop SQL so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm actually just gonna show you guys some uh, different triggers and then I'll kind of talk to you about it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste one over here. And this is actually a very simple trigger. So the trigger is actually right here, what I have highlighted, and then you'll see over here I'm saying like a delimiter. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about the trigger first and then I'll talk to you guys about what that delimiter is doing. So we can basically create a, a trigger by saying create and then I can say trigger. We're gonna give this a name. I'm just gonna call it my trigger. And I can say uh, before insert on employee for each row begin insert into trigger test. So what does all this mean? Basically I'm defining my trigger, I'm giving it a name and I'm saying that before something gets inserted on the employee table. So before anything, you know, any new item gets inserted on the employee table, um, for each of the new items that are getting inserted, I want to insert into the trigger test table the values added new employee. So basically what happens is if when I define this trigger, that means that before anything gets inserted on the employee table now, I'm gonna go ahead and perform whatever is down here. And in our case, I'm just inserting into trigger test the values added new employee. So that's basically all it is. We're basically configuring MySQL to insert a value into the trigger test table whenever a value gets inserted into the employee table. And this can be really useful because it automates things, right? I could automate something that happens every time uh, a record gets inserted into the employee table. Now, over here we have these uh, little delimiters and this delimiter is actually a special keyword in MySQL. What this will do is it'll change the MySQL delimiter. So normally the MySQL delimiter is a semicolon, right? So if I said like select all from employee, I would end this off with a semicolon. That's the delimiter, right? That delimits the different SQL commands. But when we're writing these triggers out, you'll notice that over here inside of these for each and this end, 
I have to use this semicolon over here. And so because I'm using the semicolon to end off this SQL command right here, I can't actually use that same delimiter in order to end off the trigger creation. So you have to put the semicolon here um, in order for this to work. But if I don't change the delimiter, then this semicolon is basically going to tell SQL that we're done creating the trigger, even though we're clearly not. And so what I'm doing up here is I'm changing the delimiter to two dollar signs. So basically now instead of the delimiter being a semicolon, the delimiter is going to be two dollar signs. And um, you'll see I create the trigger and then I'm using the two dollar signs to delineate that the trigger is done being created. And then I can just change the delineator back uh, to a semicolon. Now, the reason that I have to do this over here in the terminal is because in pop SQL, you can't actually configure the delimiter. So the delimiter is actually something that's defined not on the like text editor level. It's defined like over here. So basically we have to execute this over there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to execute all of these, uh, pieces of SQL code over here. So I'm just going to change the delimiter. So I'm going to paste this in, I'll hit enter. And now I'm going to paste in the actual part where I'm creating the trigger. So over here, we'll paste this and I'm just going to hit enter. And then finally, we're going to change the delimiter back. So I'm going to change this back to a semicolon. So hopefully now this trigger is all set up inside of my SQL. So one thing we can do to test it is just to add in a, another employee. So I'm going to go ahead and add another employee into the uh, employees table. So we're going to add in uh, Oscar Martinez. And let's go ahead and do that. And so we added an Oscar. Now what I'm going to do is select all from the trigger test table. So assuming our trigger got set up correctly, when we inserted a, an employee into the employee table, it should have also inserted something into trigger test that said added new employee. So let's go ahead and run this select statement and we'll see what happens. So you'll see down here, we get a message that says added new employee. So it looks like it worked, right? The trigger got set up correctly. And therefore, when we inserted something into the employee table, we actually ended up updating the trigger test table with a new entry as well. And so that is basically how we can use uh, triggers to do something like that. So I want to show you guys a couple other cool things we can do with triggers. Um, I'll show you guys another one right now. I'm actually going to again, paste it in and then we'll kind of talk about it. So this one's actually very similar to the one we just made, but instead of over here saying like added new employee, instead I'm saying new dot first name. And so what this is allowing me to do is it's actually allowing me to access a particular attribute about the thing that we just inserted. So again, uh, we're inserting something on the employee table. New is going to refer to the row that's getting inserted. And then I can access specific columns from that row. So new dot first name will give me the first name of the employee that's getting inserted. So now if I was to come down here and I'm actually just going to insert another employee, so we're going to insert Kevin Malone and let's go ahead and do that. And actually, whoops, I have to update the trigger over here. So once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to paste in um, all of this code over here on the command line. So we'll paste in the trigger and I actually need to change the name on this real quick. So we'll say my trigger one is what we're going to call that. And that's going to go ahead and then we'll change the deline or the delimiter back to a semicolon. All right. So now let's go ahead and add in our Kevin Malone employee. So I'm going to run this. So we added Kevin. Now, if we select all from trigger test, you'll see down here, not only did we add a new employee, it says add a new employee. That was that first trigger that we set up, but we also added the employee's name, which was Kevin, right? So we were able to grab a specific piece of information from the new road that got inserted and that's going to show up down there. All right. So there's one more thing I want to show you with these, uh, triggers, and it's actually going to be a more complex trigger. So this is how we can use a uh, con conditional. So I can use something like if else, if, and else, so over here we have uh, this trigger. So it's basically uh, the same exact thing as we did before trigger my trigger uh, before insert on employee. And then for each row, this time we're using an if statement. So I'm saying if new dot sex is equal to mail, then insert into trigger test values added mail employee. Else if new dot sex is equal to F insert into trigger test added female else insert into trigger test added other employees. So we're using if else logic. And basically it's just if this conditions up, up here is true, then we do this. 
Otherwise, we check this condition. If that's true, we do this. Otherwise, we do that. So if, you, if you've ever programmed before, then you're probably familiar with an if statement. So this is a very special type of trigger because we're using conditionals. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll put this one over here on the terminal. So change the delimiter, and then we're going to put this guy over here. And whoops, again, I forgot to change the name. So this will be called trigger two, and we'll put this over here. And then finally, we're just gonna change the delimiter back. All right, so now let's, again, we're gonna insert an employee. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a female employee. So why don't we insert uh, Pam Beasley? So Pam Beasley is gonna be a female, which means when we insert Pam Beasley, hopefully it should say added female into the trigger test table. So I'm gonna run this and we added the employees. Now let's select all from trigger test. And so all of these triggers are actually gonna compound on each other. So we should have quite a few entries in here. Um, so you'll see when we added Pam, it said added new employee, Pam added female. So that third trigger that we just created actually ended up working. So you'll notice over here, we've been creating triggers for insert, but you could also create triggers for update and you could also make one for delete. So anytime they're trying to insert, update or delete, you could create a trigger. So you can also do, in addition to before, you could also do after. So in certain, in certain circumstances, you won't want to insert into trigger test before you'd want to insert after, and you can go ahead and control it just like that. So, uh, but basically that's all the, you know, the main stuff that we can do with triggers. These are very, very useful, um, and they'll allow you to do a bunch of cool stuff. We can also uh, drop a trigger. So I could say like uh, over here in the terminal, I could just say drop uh, trigger, and it would be like my underscore trigger. So this will drop my underscore trigger. And now my trigger is no longer going to be uh, active. So uh, triggers are, like I said, very useful. And it's a it's a really great way to kind of control what happens when other stuff happens. And you can automate a lot of the stuff on the back end uh, of your database. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.